welcome to The Press Room with WCN-TV, brought to you by the Wilson County News. We're your source for community and communication. I'm your host, Julia, the Marketing and Social Media Specialist here at the Wilson County News. In today's episode, we're covering the following topics. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office recently received new equipment. Learn why and how they were able to get it, what purposes it will serve, and more from Wilson County Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Clint Garza. Hear from local businesses who want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. You can subscribe to print, digital, or both editions of the Wilson County News at wilsoncountynews.com slash subscribe so you never miss an edition of your local newspaper. Feel free to follow us where you're watching today so you're always up to date on the press room and our other WCN TV news. First on today's show, we're talking out with the old and in with the new. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office was excited to receive new, useful equipment in the last days of January. Chief Deputy Clint Garza is here to tell us more about the tools they received, plus what's going on at the Sheriff's Office as of late. Welcome to the press room. Hi, I'm glad to be here. As are we. We're glad you're here. So let's talk about who you are and what you do with the Wilson County Sheriff's Office. Um, my name is Clint Garza. I'm the Chief Deputy uh, for Sheriff Jim Stewart at the Wilson County Sheriff's Office. All oh, right. What does that mean? What do you do as a Chief Deputy? I basically oversee the operations of the office. Um, from it can be anything from the jail to patrol CID. Um, I help CID a lot with uh, investigations on major crime scenes and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, so a little bit of everything. Okay. Ordering equipment, you name it. You've got Whatever the sheriff tells me to do. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So speaking of equipment, what kind of equipment did the Wilson County Sheriff's Office just receive? So recently we received SOP sticks, which is a type of uh, pursuit termination device is what the, the technical term is. Um, they're basically a stop stick with spikes and um, during pursuits you can deploy them out to the roadway and spike the car's tires and slow them down. Wow. And um, the other thing that we got was a wrap and it's a it's a restraint device. It sits the, the prisoner or the person that's being restrained upright. It's in a safe position so they can breathe um, and still be able to communicate. You can monitor them, EMS and fire and whoever may come and be involved in it can also be able to access the patient to um, when we have a combative patient or a combative suspect. Okay, so why was this equipment needed? You know? These were some tools that um, we talked about um, early on when, when Sheriff Stewart got here and we had a couple big pursuits, lengthy pursuits that um, went through the county that are very dangerous. Uh, we had a couple cars get damaged on in our fleet and we had just some situations where it could have we could have had some really um, it could have went really bad and we, re we realized real quick that there weren't there wasn't a tool such as spikes that anybody carried in any other units um, in any of the departments except for Texas Highway Patrol and they're not always available or right. they're not always in the right spot and so from one of my from my previous agency, one of the things that we used were stop sticks, and they were very they were very effective. And so um, I mentioned that to sheriff. The cost, the startup cost, was a little high, but in the long run, the maintenance and um, replacement cost at the end is minimal. It, it it goes on for they last a long time. You don't use them constantly, so they you your replacement cost stuff and on the other end of it aren't um, extremely high. So That's good. we talked about that a little bit and I said, we need a way to stop pursuits and slow them down because they're dangerous and you know, we don't want people to get hurt. Right. They're dangerous to the officer. They're dangerous to the public. They're even dangerous to the suspects. And so um, any way that we can slow them down or stop them and put another tool on our belt, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So when we had those discussions, that was one of the things that came up. I was familiar with, the wrap also being used. Um, we had combative prisoners that were damaging the doors in our patrol units, kicking windows, kicking doors, and mm -hmm. having deputies injured, having prisoners injured. And, and so it cuts back on liability. You have them a way you can restrain them. It keeps them in an upright position. You can seat belt them in with that same, uh, with the same device and they can't move around in the back seat of the car or anything like that. You can put them in an ambulance. EMS can treat them, take them to the hospital, and they don't have to worry about them 
becoming combative or kicking somebody or injuring somebody. So it's it's very effective. And they're kind of things that we we could use and make our guys safer and make the public safer with. And so when the opportunity came that we were looking at grants, that was two of the things that I put on the list uh, with the stop six being our priority. And we were lucky that we got enough money to fund both. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned grants. Is that how the sheriff's office was able to acquire yes. that? Yes. So we were made aware of a, a grant through ACOG. And at the time that we applied, we had a grants coordinator here in Wilson County. And so I contacted her. And I, I don't remember if she contacted me or I contacted her, but we, we found out these grants were available. And so that's when we started kind of looking at what we needed and what would be best for us. And so that's how we came up with, I had those two items on the list of stuff that I had to, to um, kind of like a wish list of things that we yeah. wanted to get and have. And so um, she put in, she submitted everything for us, did a lot of the legwork. And then we went through the process with ACOG and they awarded us luckily enough for both, both items. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So it worked out really yeah. good. So now that you have these two tools um, in your inventory, I suppose, mm -hmm. are there any other tools that the sheriff's office is looking at purchasing in the future to help improve their processes? We're we're constantly looking at different things. You know, we we're not a, a we're not a rich county, and we understand that there's limitations um, on what we can buy and what we can purchase, and and. Um, so grants are the best way for us to re keep researching and trying to find different things to go. So we've been looking at different items. Um, we haven't set anything in stone for this year in the process. Uh, we've had a lot going on. So with just getting these, um, the, the spikes and the wraps and getting everybody trained and, and up to where they need to be with them. And then, you know, our radio system and other stuff that's coming also down the road here pretty fast. Um, we haven't been pushing hard to get another, to work on, a grant for this year but there's always stuff I have like I said I have a long list of different things uh, up, upgrading body armor for guys and um, going into our our, our, uh, um, our armor stuff um, firearms trying to get newer um, newer guns and stuff for, for the patrolmen that are out on the road um, so there's some little things that we've been looking at along the way that are costly that we could use Right, that makes sense. And this is sort of unrelated to the topic of equipment, but I also understand that the Sheriff's Office has been working on updating um, the image of all of the fleet vehicles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we've been changing, we've changed graphics, and we're also going to um, a, uh, a different style, not just your typical white patrol unit. Uh, we've got some gray and some, um, I don't even know what colors you would call it. It's, it's every dealership and or car place has a different name for the color yeah. but we've got some different colored vehicles uh, using ghost graphics which are more subdued helps us move around a little better when we're doing interdiction or looking for looking for people people don't really recognize it as a police vehicle right off the right. bat um, and then honestly just because of the way the current economy is with vehicles um, it's making it very hard for police vehicles in general for all police departments for us to even find them. So we're just getting basically what we can, um, where we can find them. And um, so I, I like using different colors other than your normal white. It kind of helps the guys do their job. And, right, it's not and as not, obvious. It's not as obvious, yeah. So um, uh, we've been we've been doing that um, here in the last year or so. So it's uh, it's been working out. And basically we're just trying to get whatever cars we can get to yeah. on top of that. But we have trucks. Tahoe's, a little bit of everything in our fleet. That's pretty good though. So, nice to have variety. Yes. <laughs> so other than the new tools and the fleet updates, is there anything else new or in the works at the Wilson County Sheriff's Office? The biggest project that we're working on right now is our radio project. And uh, that's it's been a year and a half and we've been putting a lot of time and work into it. And it's gonna be pretty good, pretty awesome actually when we get it going here, uh, hopefully in the next month or two. We're gonna go live on it. It's gonna make it's gonna be a game changer for for a lot of agency for all of our agencies that we serve: fire, EMS, and, and law enforcement. As I understand, this new radio system will combine all of the current systems that the ESDs. Have? Yes. So so there'll be a fire and EMS side. Okay. Um, and then there'll be a law enforcement side. So we had 
a couple of the ESD um, chiefs help work on creating channel banks and different things for the fire and EMS dispatch side. And then at our office, um, myself and the sheriff have been working on a law enforcement bank uh, for all of our law enforcement partners and including a dispatch, new dispatch consoles and, yeah. and radio. It's all included it together. So it's going to take us from like what we operate now as an analog and a digital channel that's going to create multiple channels so that we can spread officers out into if you have some kind of major event we can put all the all the radio traffic on a different channel allow the emergency channels to still operate um, so we're not all on top of each other fighting for the same air, air time wow well that's going to make a huge difference yes and yeah the, the way the county is growing um, that was a huge need that we needed um, that we saw right off the bat the system that was in place was antiquated it was not um, it wasn't stable and every agency in our county is growing every city is growing and we're growing and so it was that time we, we we came into that funding that wouldn't affect taxpayers at all and we decided that this is a time we can we can spend this money now and and we put it out there and our commissioners and our and our county judges the, our county judge supported it and um, that's what we went with and it's gonna be it's gonna be great for everybody all, all the way around well that's amazing it's awesome to hear that y'all are getting closer to the end of that project um, and as I understand, y'all will be able to get more information about the radio project as the Sheriff's Office keeps us updated. So be looking for that in coming editions of the Wilson County News. Yes. Um, but for now, where else other than the Wilson County News do you recommend folks go to stay updated on what y'all are up to? We, we try to stay updated on our Facebook page as much as possible. So okay. we have only a handful of people that are active that we that we that work on that page. So we're not always on top of everything like we are, especially if we're out in the field and we have something going on, but we try to stay on top of it. And that's usually where if we want to put some new information out or uh, some kind of new news from our office, that's where we go to. Right. Or we use it through y'all. That's very true. So I guess that's all for today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Awesome. And maybe we'll have you back to talk about the radio once sure. that's finalized. Sure. I'd be glad to come back. Have you seen the Valentine's Day spread in the Wilson County News? Businesses from around Wilson County have joined the Wilson County News in wishing you a happy Valentine's Day. Let's take a look at these businesses' loving wishes and the great deals they're offering. Today, folks, thank you for tuning in to the Press Room with WCN-TV, brought to you by the Wilson County News. For more information about anything we covered in today's show, see the February 8th edition of the Wilson County News or visit wilsoncountynews.com. You can also find articles corresponding to each topic discussed today in this video's description. Remember to follow us where you're watching so you never miss an episode, and consider subscribing to receive print, digital, or both editions of the Wilson County News each week. You can find more news, including free news resources, or subscribe at wilsoncountynews.com. Or download our app, Go Wilson, to receive updates from our newsroom at your fingertips. The app is available for Apple and Android devices at gowilsonapp.com. We hope you'll tune in next week for another episode of The Press Room. We'll see you then.